Welcome back to the cooking show at my apartment. I'm Faraday and today we're gonna make kebab kubide. It's an Iranian kebab. It's truly gonna be magnificent. First of all, all my fellow Persians out there and Iranians are gonna be like, that's not how I do it. I'm doing my own little kind of take on this. One of the last places I traveled was to San Diego to visit one of my really good friends, Felicia, and her husband, Mehdi. He's Iranian as well. And at this beach, Mehdi made us these beautiful kubide kebabs and I forgot how much I loved it. Um, so I thought, you know what? I gotta redo this. I gotta share it with the cooking show. I actually was just calling my dad earlier to like chat with him about it. And so we were kind of talking about what makes kubide kubide. And I think one of the things my dad kept harping on about was the onion, which we're grating. All he kept saying, he kept repeating, repeating, repeating. Don't forget to squeeze out all the liquid from it, okay? So I'm gonna grate this and we're gonna squeeze out all the liquid. My eyes are watering again. And um, whew, my dad's not here. I haven't seen him in a while. But I do have Ian here, producer. Over, wow. he's he's watching me cook and not eating any of it. I'm gonna go back in the corner and cry for a moment, so just give me a second. So we're gonna squeeze out all the juice. This is definitely the worst part of this recipe. And look, I mean, I'm squeezing it right onto this, which is kind of stupid. <laughs> I don't know why I'm squeezing it right onto my countertop, but it's fine. I'm just gonna wipe it up. Oh. Stop laughing at me, Ian. All right, look at that, nice dry onion. Dry onion? Wet eyes. So one thing to also relay to you guys is that the beef should be about 80-20 fat. Like it needs a good amount of fat in there. I'm gonna put in two and a half teaspoons of salt and a couple tablespoons of sumac. The thing about sumac that I love is that it's got like a really kind of citrusy, lemony kind of flavor to it, which I find to be really beautiful. In our mixture, we're also gonna put about a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now, my dad was like, don't put baking soda in there, what are you doing? I just remember it raises the pH of the meat. It's gonna help make your meat more tender. You should, by the way, always, me getting a small fucking bowl, just mix a bunch of stuff, so. Why, I always do this, oh yeah, yeah. Also, usually you double grind it. I'm like, you ask your butcher to do that for you normally. If you don't get double ground beef, guys, it's okay. Like, we're living in weird times right now, and you can mash this really well. Oh, yeah, yeah. The onion's still getting me. I'm gonna sit here. Where are my onion goggles? Oh, oh God, I'm gonna cry. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Just dance it off. You gotta dance out your tears, guys. Dance until you're no longer crying. That's what they say. People say, like, don't overwork your meat, blah, 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 blah. You do need to like mix this a fucking lot though with this stuff. But also the baking soda in there is gonna help make it more tender. If you wanna try the meat and see how it's seasoned before you cook it, before you're finished with it, you can take a little ball of this off, fry it up, taste it for seasoning, and then add more salt if you need to. Don't over salt it because your tears will season as you go. Mm. So I'm gonna let this marinate for about an hour because I put this baking soda in it. I'm not gonna do it too, too long. Oh look, it's been marinating. How about that? Now, if you're gonna do kebab kubide, you're gonna need to get some of these skewers, okay? Look at this bad boy. I almost broke that. What if I just broke the bowl while I was doing this? That would be so stupid. Part of also what I didn't mention when I was making the beef, why it's double ground and stuff. So kubide is a classic street food basically in Iran. But what they do is they take like full beef and they put it on like a stone or something and they have, like, it's almost like a sword. Or they put onion in with it and they grind it by hand on these big flat surfaces. And that's where it gets the name from, kubide, because in Farsi, it's the method of doing it. You're like grinding it up really, really fine. So wet hands, just like this. We're gonna make four of these. So let's see, I'm gonna cut. It's about this much. You're gonna put it around here. And so it's really cool because these skewers, no one has these. Every time like people see them, they're like, why do you have those ginormous skewers? But because it's ground like this, it's gonna stick easier to the skewer so it doesn't fall off into the coals while you're cooking it. So if you look at, the, if you go to Iran and like people who are really good at making kubide have such a good technique for this and you're using your thumb and your forefinger mainly to make it really flat. And it has these like dimples into it. I'm not good at this. 
And you kind of smush the end of it too, so there you go. Boop, 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 boop. I lit my grill during that marination process. Sorry we didn't show you guys, but you don't need to see me lighting a grill. If you don't know how to light a grill, check out our YouTube tutorial, how to light a grill the right way. If you want, you could pretend to sort of fight yourself. Okay, we're gonna try that. I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> this one I'm doing a little bit different. Like, not as wide. This one's fucking loaded with the beef. Same. Big beef energy. Oh, did you see Pete Davidson's back on Instagram? You probably didn't because you don't follow him. He's I back on Instagram. Like, all he said, he's done three posts. This one's definitely too fat, but it's fine. It's fine. They all look great. We wash our hands. So, Ian, I might lose you outside. I don't know how strong my Wi Fi connection is. I'm gonna bring the cameras out. Got my tray of things ready to go with this, okay? Usually you would use sengak, which is like a really nice Iranian flatbread. But I did find this nice lavash, which I'm gonna use. The important thing when you're grilling this too, is you're grilling it over coal. You can't, you can do it, I guess, on like a gas grill, but why do you have a gas grill? Like, just get a charcoal grill. We're gonna go outside. I'm gonna cut the cameras. Next thing you know, I'm gonna be out on my roof. Woo! I live right by the subway, so she goes by. At least I have my friend out here, old Fanny Flamingo. It's awkward. So guys, we're grilling over charcoal. This is spread out into a nice even layer, so I'm just gonna put these right over the top. We're gonna do some butter right on top of this guy. Oh man, look at that. It needs to be over the charcoal. You don't want it right on the grates. It's just gonna be over, then the heat's just gonna keep going and getting it, okay? Again, with some butter on one side. Oh yes, it's gonna be flame licked. It's gonna be delicious. The butter is just helping, and all the, and there's fat in the meat, you know what I mean? We did the 80-20. It's helping the flames, just kind of licking it and cooking it. Butter is the key to happiness. So you're gonna leave it for 30 seconds on this side. Butter this side. Then I'm gonna flip it again for 30 seconds, and that's gonna help set the meat. So for the first like couple minutes, we're just gonna keep flipping it every 30 seconds until it's set, and then it's gonna like char all over, okay? Like look at this, it doesn't take long for this to set and that butter is just helping to like get those flames licking it. This is gonna be good. I'm excited. And also, it's warming me up. It smells so good. You can smell the onion. It smells like home. We'll do a little bit more butter. Ha! Huh. Damn. Oh man, this is looking good. Look at this. It doesn't take long. I'm gonna move that guy over here. Oh my gosh. Oh, where's my Bubba June? My dad was here, my old Bubba June, he'd be proud of me with this. He's alive, but made me sound like he's like not alive. <laughs> Bubba June, this is for you. What's up? What's up? This is looking so good. Yeah, this is done. So I'm gonna move these to the side. Let's do a little butter on this bread. Throw her on down. Salt. Just burnt my fuck out of my hand so much. Oh yeah, this guy is done. She done so. Take the bread and use that to like pull the meat off the skewer. Just like this. Look at this. It's so beautiful. We got our lavash, our sengak, some lime with it, fresh basil. Usually you want to get Persian basil or something. Some nice parsley. If you have dill, you could use that as well. A little bit more sumac over everything. A little bit of oil. Look at that. This is gorgeous. I'm just gonna tear off a piece because that'll be easier than picking up the whole thing, all right? But usually, I would do that. I would eat this with like some feta cheese and everything. It's got your sumac, your lime, these fresh herbs. Mmm. You could do some fresh onion with this too. It's so bright and light. It's like citrusy and herby. The beef is so good. It's got that char-licked flavor. The sumac is so nice in there. It's tender. The baking soda did its job. So I want you guys to make this at home and enjoy it. It's so comforting for me. And I hope you guys make it and like it too, because this is good. This is a new way to grill. Mmm. 
I go on um, hikes sometimes and I always pick up sticks and as I'm walking behind my friends, I like get in their ears with the, the stick and I think it's a bug. That's what I would do with this, but this is not fun to stick in someone's ear. So yeah, those are your friends? Yeah, friends. They don't like me. That's why I live alone.